Hi there, Hoondan. Long time no see. Hmm. This is definitely your simplest oracle by far. <laughs> Patty. Now it all makes sense. Zack, we need to hurry back to the hotel and put all this in order. Very good, please. Serving you is my please. We found many new truths hidden in Lena Doman's journal, and some of them went far beyond our wildest dreams. First, we should clear up who PJ's first daughter is. She was a complete mystery until now, but after reading Lena's journal, I became convinced of something. She still lives somewhere in this town. Lena's journal stated that this woman married someone from the same town. Did you figure it out yet, Zach? Who is PJ Clarkson's first? She's PJ Clarkson's first daughter. 
which means that just like Galena, Candy also carries his blood. Now we know why Melvin said that Galena was a beauty who could attract a lot of attention. Candy had no interest in the inheritance and was also sexually liberated. That must be why PJ ended up coddling Lenny so much. Candy is supposedly sick, but she's now become a key person in our case. She must be why Melvin's gone missing. Melvin's beloved wife, Candy, committed a transgression in her past. Zach, what was it? That's right. Candy had intercourse with her younger brother, Leonard. Then she gave birth to a child, a child that we know very well. We never heard any mention of her biological father anywhere in town, despite how much these country folk love to spread rumors. I knew there had to be some secret connected to her birth, but I never thought it'd be something like this. It's beyond anything I ever could have imagined, Zack. Next up is the Fool King, Zack. All you need to do is pick out the person who acted most like a fool when we encountered them. Honestly, the answer is clear. And it's a painful one to accept, isn't it, Zack? Melvin. He's got to be the Fool King. The way he's acted from the moment he located Lisa's body up to now. The way Galena was murdered, silenced, without any resistance. His discord with the Clarksons. The words PJ left behind. And the engineer boot prints we saw at the Discovery site. It feels like the missing puzzle pieces are all falling into place now. But why did he decide to take part in Lena's plan? According to Patricia, he seemed to be avoiding Lena. There's no way he actually could have believed that the goddess of fertility would come and save the town. Oh. So that's it, Melvin. As you nursed Candy, you too became corrupted by San Rouge. Drugs rob people of their judgment. They slowly but surely eat away at their users. That's most likely the reason it took Lena so long to enact her plan. I don't know what to say, Zack. This is absolutely unbearable. Lena fell in love with her older sister Candy, and the two of them had intercourse. But afterwards, Lena realized that there was a disparity between her body and her mind, and descended into suffering. Finally, Lena left home and decided to live on as Professor R. Meanwhile, Candy fell in love with Melvin, which led to her leaving home as well. I could only guess that Lena and Candy's relationship continued after they left home. Then, their strange love transformed into something else that bound them together in a powerful new way. Lena must have periodically delivered San Rouge to Candy as offerings to the goddess of fertility. It's hard to keep going with this, Zack. You know where it's all leading, don't you? If Lena's plan was to kill off every last Clarkson aside from her goddess, then her next target is PJ's last living descendant. She's in danger. We need to hurry. Zack, the climax is upon us. Whoever hit me in that control room sure wasn't holding back. The blow was so devastating that I passed out instantly. There aren't many people who could do that. Hmm. Oh, they hit me right in my head, so my memories are fuzzy. Not my finest hour, to say the least. Now, what should we do next? First, we're going to need to refresh ourselves a little. Sunbathing, Zack. Let's go bask in some liquid sunshine that's just as hot as the sun out there.
Very good, sir. Please. Serving you at least. All folks can drink here is a melody of rich, robust leaves. Tea and tea alone. If you fixing to drink that muddy water, you'll have to go on over to my little sister's restaurant. Or would you like to switch over to tea? Thank you for your offer, but I'll have to decline, chef. I said I want coffee and I meant it. That hot, bitter, dark, maddeningly odiferous muddy water. Well, then you're free to do as you like. But you ain't gonna be drinking it here. That's for sure. Zach, I seem to have mistaken our chef here for a more open-minded person. Oh, well. It'll cost us a bit of time, but let's head over to it. Okay, I That's what I'll come on. Oh, my lord! You sure look pooped, honey! Hello, Alexis. Yes, someone did quite the number on me. Must have given you one heck of a shiner. Well, let me get you some coffee so you can relax, honey. Yes, that's it, Alexis. Just what I was waiting for. Would it be possible to get an especially pungent cup, smoldering with all the heat of the southern sun? Coming right up! Whoa, 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 whoa. 
<laughs> Zack, look. <laughs> Patty. No, Melvin. No! Oh, my Lord, what are you trying to do? Wake the dead? What's wrong, honey? Where is this boathouse located? Oh, my Lord, what's going on with you? Your poor voice is positively trembling. Just tell me. Where is this boathouse located? There's lots of boathouses around these parts, honey. Your guess is as good as mine. Well, then can you at least tell me when this photo was taken? Looks to me like it was taken during the Clarks and Campbell wedding party when PJ married his ex-wife, Audrey. There was a building this tall in town back then? Oh, you... That must be the cold storage warehouse. That big billboard on the roof is the Clarkson's, see? I bet you'd be able to get a great view of all the boathouses in the swamp from up there. Thank you. That's all the info I need. Would you mind if I borrowed this? Shoot, of course not, honey. <laughs> Thanks for your help. And keep the change. <gasps> oh, my lord. I owe you an apology for 
how I was acting before. I think I get what you meant now. You'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power. Well, those words woke me up. I need to get myself together or I'll sink. And you saved me. <laughs> so, uh... Now this is a surprise, Zack. Can a human being really turn themselves around this quickly? Hey, come on, don't say that. I was drunk, you know. I lost my baby girl, my wife, then my father-in-law. I, I didn't know what to do. Blaming it all on someone else was the only way I knew how to cope. All right? What are you here for, anyway? Thought you already investigated this place. I'd like to get your permission to climb up to the roof. Right up to that hideous sign there. Oh, is that all? Well, go on ahead. I know you're a genius agent. If you need to go up there, then by all means. Danny, I'm not a genius. I'm a complete failure. I never even gave a single thought to P.J. Clarkson's first daughter. I was practically oblivious the entire time. I never considered the possibility that Lena had a child either. And that misstep cost us many sacrifices. But you know all about it now, right? Then just move on. You figured out that it was Galena who murdered Lise. And that Galena was being manipulated by Lena. You proved that my treasure wasn't evil after all. It may have cost us a lot of sacrifices, but that still makes you a genius agent. And that's how I know I can trust you. Now, I don't care if you're FBI. I'm still gonna come clean and say it. Whoever killed my treasure is gonna pay. I wanna track him down, then kill him with my own hands. But I'm a Clarkson too. So I made up my mind. All Clarkson's got a job to do. Which one is it, Zack? Patricia must be in the boathouse we saw in that photograph. Along with Melvin and Candy, the goddess of fertility. What I saw at Alexis's restaurant. Not only was my mind still reeling, but the oracle was also rather vague. But so what, Zack? We just need to find the same boathouse that we saw in that picture. There's got to be another singularity inside it. Zack, that's the boathouse. It's right where the photograph was taken. But I have no idea how we're supposed to reach it. Zack? It looks like we have no choice but to head back to the starting line. Let's go and see... The one who fired the pistol at heaven. He should be able to transport us straight to that boathouse. Remember, his love for justice is so strong that he chased a poacher's boat all the way up the bayou. I'm sure he'll be happy to help us. Zack, stop and just imagine it for a moment. Chuck's face. Once he hears that poacher's boat is actually a shrine housing the goddess of fertility. <laughs> What's this? Who left this message for her? Zack, you know what? I forgot all about our ten-foot giant. We still have a lot of work left to do in this town. Zack, there's the biggest man we've seen in town thus far. Let's talk to him just in case. Hello there, Avery. 
I need your help. Would you mind raising your arms up high like this for me? Raise my arms? Like this? Thank you. That's perfect. It appears that even with your height, you'd have a tough time reaching a spot up that high. I love Lise. Yup. <laughs> But Lise got cold. Lise turned white. My, my poor sunlight wouldn't move no more. Avery, I understand how you feel. I'm sure that Lise does too. Really? Oh yes. I guarantee it. Right now, I'm trying to eliminate the cause of her death. But I need your assistance. If you ever see a man who looks taller and stronger than you, I want you to let me know. I will. You bet I will. Hello, Chuck. The time has finally come to catch that poacher's boat you spoke of. Oh, now he wants to catch the boat. Thought you FBI boys don't chase down boats. Ain't that what you said? Unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our country, right? You're exactly right, Chuck. I discovered that boat does contain perpetrators who are potentially capable of overthrowing our country. Perpetrators who are deeply connected to a new drug called San Rouge. And you expect me to help you? Yes, I need your help. <sniffs> I see you got the balls to match just how big a goddamn prick you are. Poachers can fuck with my form all they want, but the moment drugs get involved, all of a sudden you're raring to go. Guess what? I don't give a shit. I can't solve this case without your help, Chuck. If you're angry about how I acted earlier, then please allow me to apologize. I don't want no apology. Then how can I get you to trust me? You really don't know when to shut up, do ya? <laughs> As you can see, I'm busy here. So if you're done harassing me, then, uh... Chuck, that was amazing. Absolutely incredible. Fantastic. How did you do that? Uh, thanks? I don't know. The answer lies in his physical advantage. That's it, Zack. Your stance when you toss makes all the difference. I can't get over how beautiful his stance was. Just what am I missing? You like skipping stones? You know, I always trust a man who knows how to skip good. See, the key to skipping... It's how close your arm is to the water when you throw. You also need accurate speed, an accurate wrist snap, and accurate timing when you let go. That's why short folk who stay low to the ground and keep a low profile like me can skip better. And that's how I reckon I can trust a man who knows what skipping's all about. Got it? 
If you want my help, you gotta impress me with your skipping. Then I'll lend you my boat. Hot damn! Woo-wee! You're a natural. That was flawless skipping, all right. Really? Oh, yeah. You got talent, boy. And you're humble, too. Well, I did have a great teacher. That's what helped me to stay low. Yep. That's the key. Gotta keep low profile. Folks can learn a lot about life from stone skipping. Fellers gotta stay humble. Keep yourself from getting all arrogant. Know what I mean? Okay, maestro, I trust you now. I'll take you into the swamp or wherever the hell else you want to go. Want to shove off now? Gotta make hay while the sun shines. 